Miami Dolphins lose by a wide margin again dropping to 1-4. The only thing that has become consistent with the Miami Dolphins is getting blown out and it's time to stop saying it's the offense's fault. Miami played so good that the Buccaneers were able to bench Tom Brady in the fourth quarter so that Blaine Gabbert could run on the field and engineer a drive that put them first in goal with two minutes left in the game. He took a knee and ran the clock out. Why? Because scoring wasn't needed. They were already up 45-17. to 17. For the Dolphins, their struggles are evident on both sides of the ball. In the first quarter, Miami actually held a 10-7 lead but that was as close as the game would get. The Dolphins' defense couldn't stop the Bucks, and when they put them in third-down situations, Tom Brady just shook it off and threw the ball downfield. Jerome Baker was horrible and was out of position. He had one job most of the game, cover Leonard Fournette. He couldn't. Likewise, Miami top paid player, Xavier Howard, should give some money back. Miami was so bad today that the 26-game turnover streak came to an end. Miami wasn't close to making plays today. Offensively, the Dolphins ran with a quarterback who suffered a hamstring injury late in quarter two rather than give Reed Sinnott a shot. Brissett didn't have a bad game overall in truth be told. The offense finally did something right. They moved the ball well enough to sustain drives but as soon as the defense got back on the field, the precision offense led by Brady was simply too much and they were exposed. This defense simply isn't that good right now and while the offense is far worse, the reality is that both sides of the ball have consistency issues. Miles Gaskin had a career game and proved that he should be the featured back on the team, not Malcolm Brown. He ran well when he needed to but played a Alvin Kamara role in the passing game. He had a fantastic game with more than 10 receptions and two touchdowns. Clearly the Dolphins could have used Devontae Parker and Will Fuller but it wouldn't have helped all that much. The Dolphins simply can't figure it out. In their five games, they have scored more than 17 points only once, 28 against the Raiders with most of those coming late in the fourth quarter to force overtime. They scored 17 week one against the Patriots, nothing against the Bills, 17 against the Colts, and 17 against the Buccaneers. That isn't good enough to play in the NFL, especially when your defense gives up 35 to the Bills, 31 to the Raiders, 27 to the Colts, and 45 to the Buccaneers. Chris Greer isn't the only one who is to blame for this team. As a Miami Dolphins fan, blame has been going around these last couple of bleak weeks. Most of the Miami Dolphins community has been crying for Chris Greer to be held accountable for the many underperforming high drafts picks selected over the last few years. Also, many draft picks are no longer with the team since he had been involved with the front office for 22 years before his promotion to general manager. In his initial draft as general manager for the Miami Dolphins in 2016, only Xavier Howard remains. But if you look at the realities, his aggressive pick of Laramie Tunsil, given the uncertainty surrounding him, paid off huge, so counting on Howard as a home run hit in 2016 would be severely disrespectful. Chris Greer's 2017 draft does leave plenty of doubt in his collegiate scouting abilities. First round selection, 22 ND overall Charles Harris was a colossal bust while wearing aqua and orange. He never could rush the passer or set the edge during run plays. To make matters worse, TJ Watt was available as he was selected 30th overall. Unlike the 2016 draft class, there are no players left on the roster from the 2017 draft class. But all these wasted picks do not spell doom for general manager Chris Greer. He selected players that fit the mold of former head coach Adam Gase. Schemes and playing style could not be more different between Adam Gase's Miami Dolphins and Brian Flores' Miami Dolphins. Chris Greer's job is to stock the cupboard with as many talented football players as possible. So objectively looking at recent drafts, Greer seems to be finding players to contribute early. What appears to be happening every Sunday is there are players not being used by the coaching staff, not in the best position for that player, or not used at all. Head coach Brian Flores was a fan favorite heading into the 2021 season. Miami head coach had just led the way to a 10-win season, and Miami had appeared to load up on young players that were thought to be sure-fire upgrades to players who started during the 2020 NFL season. With such drastic improvements from year one to year, two-fan speculation was playoffs or bust for the 2021 Miami Dolphins. But at 1-4, what went so wrong? Miami coaching staff has regularly put players in a position to fail. Austin Jackson, who does not move well in space and is constantly beat around the edge with speed, 
doesn't possess the athletic ability to play left tackle in the NFL. Austin Jackson is also beat occasionally with a bull rush, so he would have to improve play strength to a man in one of the two guard positions, but on tape, it is clear that Austin Jackson is not being played in a position to succeed. So as everyone is calling for Chris Greer's head, maybe this is on the offensive coaching staff for putting the wrong players in the bad positions and head coach Brian Flores for allowing it. Two players the Dolphins need get under contract. The Miami Dolphins have played five games during the season and have lost four in a row. In Miami, Chris Greer is playing a financial game with a few of his players and frankly, he needs to stop and just open the checkbook. And he should do it now rather than later. Greer gave big and questionable contracts to Jakeem Grant, Will Fuller, and Kyle Van Noy. He was part of the big extension for Devontae Parker and while he was smart to lock up Jerome Baker and Jason Sanders, there are other players that need to be addressed. There is no question that Mike Jasicki should be getting his new contract. He is reliable and more importantly, he is on the field. Unlike Parker, Fuller, and a few others, Jasicki has stayed relatively healthy. Last year he was sidelined with a broken shoulder but outside of that, he is far from brittle like Fuller and Parker. Jasicki is going to get a big pay raise either from the Dolphins or in free agency. It would be a mistake to let Jasicki leave because he is one of only a handful on the entire team that shows up actually ready to play. He may not be a good blocker but he isn't and never was, supposed to be. Emmanuel Ogba is banking on himself this year. He could he have held out of camp but opted not make make waves. He is already trending to be a top 5 defensive end in the league this year and is in the top 5 in quarterback pressures through 4 games. Ogba has been very good for the Dolphins but instead, he has quietly watched Xavier Howard get babied and pampered with a restructured deal and watched Miami invest long term in a kicker while throwing money at those mentioned above. Miami should get him under contract because if I were Ogba, I wouldn't go to the table after the season. I would test the market first. As for the rest of the team? Miami has a lot of impending free agents but there are no one outside of the two above that should be talking with the Dolphins about extensions. In fact, the Dolphins should be looking to replace 98% of them in free agency as they are currently looking to have over $80 million in cap space next season. There are 23 players that will be free agents of some kind next season. 17 of those are unrestricted including Ogba and Jasicki. Mac Hollins should be resigned but he needs to get on the field and show he can play at this level. He can but for whatever reason, the coaches are not giving him his shot. Elandon Roberts is a cheap and quality depth player that should be brought back but in reality, players like Will Fuller, Jacoby Brissett, and even Malcolm Brown should be one and done players in Miami.